Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build an efficient RC soccer bot circuit using an ESP32 with Arduino programming. For this setup, I'm using my custom-designed dual BTS 7960 motor driver. This makes the system compact and eliminates the hassle of excessive wiring. You can also control the robot using Bluetooth or Wi-Fi simply by changing the code, without any hardware modifications. One of the great features of this design is the ability to instantly toggle the speed mode using the transmitter's switch. This is particularly useful during a match when controlling the bot at high speed becomes challenging. So make sure to watch this video till the very end without skipping any part. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon so you'll be notified of my upcoming videos. TB6612FNG or L293D are great for low current projects. However, when you need serious power handling, the single-channel BTS7960 driver is usually the go-to option. You typically need to use two separate BTS7960 modules. This creates a mess of wiring and takes up extra space. That's why I decided to design a dual BTS7960 motor driver on a single PCB with a smaller footprint, making the entire setup much more compact. I designed this PCB in Easy EDA software and then exported the Gerber file. Next, I placed my order through the JLC PCB website. I uploaded my Gerber file, selected the desired quantity and PCB color options, and completed the order. I always prefer JLC PCB for PCB manufacturing because they deliver professional quality boards at an affordable cost. Another excellent feature is that JLC PCB provides real time order tracking, so you always know the current stage of your order. After just a few days, I received the PCB, and the quality was truly impressive. I then carefully soldered all the components onto the PCB. After completing the soldering process, I powered it up for testing, and it worked perfectly on the very first try. So, if you're looking to print your own PCBs, be sure to open an account using the link in the description to claim your free coupon as a new user. You can collect this driver directly from us. Also, we have a full kit for RoboSoccer. To make a purchase, simply visit our Instagram, WhatsApp, or Facebook page of Robotech Innovator. Now, let's move on to the main topic. Here, you can see the diagram of the motor connections between the driver and the ESP32, as well as the pin mapping from the ESP32 to the driver. Alternatively, you can also use two separate BTS7960 modules for the same setup. The best part is that no changes are required in the code. You will also find the complete circuit diagram included in the project file. To begin the setup, I am using an ESP32 and connecting it to a 5V buck converter module. This module provides power to both the ESP32 and the receiver. Next, I connected a 3-terminal jumper wire to the ESP32 for reading signals from the receiver. Among these, the red wire is connected to the 5V line, and the black wire is connected to ground, ensuring the receiver gets power. The remaining two terminals do not need to be connected to power, only the yellow signal wire is required to read the control signal. After that, I connected a four-terminal jumper wire from the ESP32's PWM pins to the motor driver to control the motors. Then, I connected a jumper wire from the battery's positive and negative terminals and connected it to the input of the buck converter to supply power. Once the battery is connected, I checked the output voltage to confirm stable power delivery. It is important to ensure that the buck module is set to exactly 5V. With the power confirmed, I organized all the modules and secured them neatly with tape. Here is the pinout of the receiver. Then, I connected the receiver to the jumper wires, and the connections between ESP32 and the receiver were made accordingly. Next, let's look at the transmitter setup. In the transmitter's AUX channel system, I assign toggle switch C to channel 5 of the receiver.
After that, I navigated to the Elevon settings and made sure that the Elevon feature was turned off, and that completes the transmitter setup. Let's move on to the coding part. First, open the Arduino IDE and go to the File menu, then select Preferences. In the Additional Board Manager URLs section, paste the ESP32 board link. You will find this link included in the project file. Then go to the Board Manager and search for ESP32. Then install version 2.0.11 of the ESP32 board. To begin, I'm using a simple code that reads the channel values from the receiver and displays them in the serial monitor. In this code, I first define the pins connected to the ESP32 for each channel and set them as inputs inside the setup function. Then, I use the pulse-in function to read the RC signal values in microseconds. The pulse-in function measures the duration of a pulse on a digital pin and returns that duration in microseconds. For example, when I write the pulse-in function for channel 1, it instructs the ESP32 to watch the signal on that pin, wait for it to go high, and then measure how long it remains high before going low again. The return number represents the pulse width. After reading the values, I printed them to the serial monitor. Next, I uploaded the code to the ESP32 and opened the serial monitor to observe the channel values. By default, when the joystick is at its center position, the value is approximately 1500. When I push the stick upwards, the value gradually increases up to around 2000, and when I move the stick downwards, it decreases gradually to about 1000. For the toggle switch on channel 5, the values behave a little differently. When the switch is in the up position, the reading is close to 1000. In the middle position, the reading is around 1500. And when the switch is in the down position, the value is near 2000. So these are the maximum, middle, and minimum pulse values for channel 1, channel 2, and the toggle switch on channel 5. Let's go through the main code and understand how it works. We start by defining the input pins connected to the FlySky receiver. Channel 1 is used for forward and backward movement, Channel 2 is for left and right steering, and Channel 5 is assigned as a speed mode toggle switch. Next, we define the motor driver pins for the BTS-7960. Since the ESP32 supports hardware PWM on multiple channels, we also allocate four PWM channels. Two for each motor, one for forward and one for reverse. After that, we set the RC signal limit. The receiver outputs pulse widths between 1000 and 2000 microseconds, where 1500 represents the neutral or center position. We also introduce a speed multiplier, which allows us to scale the speed dynamically based on the position of the toggle switch on channel 5. There's also a small helper function called apply deadband. This function ensures that very small stick movements, or electrical noise around the center position, don't accidentally move the motors. If the joystick value is within a small threshold, it is treated as zero. Now, inside the setup function, we configure the receiver pins as inputs and the motor pins as output. Then, we set up the PWM channels using LED setup at 1 kHz with 8-bit resolution and attach them to their respective motor pins. We make sure the motors are stopped at startup by calling the stop motors function. Moving into the loop function. First, we read the RC signals from the receiver using pulse in, which measures the duration of the high pulse in microseconds. If the received values are outside the expected range, the system goes into fail safe mode and stops the motors to avoid unwanted movement. This prevents errors caused by invalid signals, for example, when the transmitter is turned off. Since our expected range is 1000 to 2000 microseconds, anything outside that is considered invalid. Next, the code checks the position of channel 5 to decide the speed mode. If the switch is in the up position, where the channel value is around 1000, the multiplier is set to 50% of the speed, which results in a very low speed for the robot. If it's in the down position, where the channel value is around 2000, it's set to 80% of the speed. Otherwise, meaning if the switch is in the middle position, it defaults to full speed. This gives us three levels of speed controlled directly from the transmitter. You can change the switch position to toggle between different speeds based on your preference. After that, we take the raw values from channel 1 and channel 2 and map them from the range of 1000 to 2000 microseconds into motor speed values between minus 255 and plus 255. Negative values represent the reverse direction and positive values represent the forward direction. The deadband function is applied to clean up small noise values. Then comes the mixing algorithm. This is where we calculate how much power to send to the left and right motors. The logic checks if the joystick is strongly tilted left. 
If so, it reduces the left motor's speed and boosts the right motor's speed to make sharper turns. Otherwise, it mixes the forward and turning values normally. Finally, the speeds are constrained so they never exceed the valid PWM range of minus 255 and plus 255. The values are printed to the serial monitor for debugging, and then they're applied to the motors using the motor drive function. For the final run, you can comment out the debugging print statement. The motor drive function takes the speed value and decides whether to run the motor forward, backward, or stop. If the speed is positive, it writes PWM to the forward channel. If it's negative, it writes PWM to the reverse channel. And if it's zero, it stops the motor completely. Lastly, we have the stop motors function, which simply calls the motor drive function with zero speed for both motors. This is used both at startup and during failsafe conditions. For displaying the PWM values for left and right motor speeds in the serial monitor, I uncommented the serial print function. You can now see the PWM values for left and right motor control. When I move the stick forward, both values are positive, which indicates the forward movement. When I move the stick backward, both values are negative, which indicates reverse movement. When the toggle switch is set to the up position, the maximum PWM speed is 125, which equals 50% of the full speed. When the toggle switch is set to the down position, the PWM value reaches 200, which equals 80% of the full speed. When the toggle switch is set to the middle position, the PWM value is 255, which equals 100% of the full speed. You can also modify these percentages in the code according to your requirements. Now moving on to the final setup. I'm wrapping up the receiver with tape for safety and neatness. Next, I've taken the chassis where two motors are connected in parallel on the left and right side. The motors are connected in such a way that when they are powered, both should rotate in the same direction. So, the next step is connecting the left and right motor terminals to the motor driver's output port. Then, I connect the battery to calibrate the motors. First, I move the joystick stick forward and observe the rotation direction of both motors. The expected result is that both motors should run forward. If any motor, left or right, rotates in reverse, I make a note of it and then swap its terminal connections at the motor driver. In my case, the left motor was running backward, so I had to interchange its terminals on the motor driver. After making this correction, I test the motor direction again by pushing the stick forward, and now everything is working correctly. Next, let's check the speed toggle mode. When I switch between modes, I can clearly notice the change in the motor sound, which indicates that the speed is being adjusted as expected. Now, I carefully set up the battery and the circuit inside the robot's chassis, fixing everything securely in place. Finally, I attach the wheels. This robot can also be controlled by a smartphone using the ESP32's built-in Bluetooth feature, or even over Wi-Fi without any hardware modifications. You can follow these tutorials for Bluetooth or Wi-Fi setup. That makes this circuit suitable for multiple types of control setup. Now, let's see the final run.
After playing with the robot for a while, I can feel that the control is very smooth and reliable. However, if you are a beginner in soccer robot competitions, you'll need plenty of practice to get comfortable and make your control smooth and natural. Thank you for watching the full video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more exciting projects.